Hello and welcome back to our video series on your PLR makeover. Now that you have the proper tools and you've come up with that prize winning super title, it's time to roll up our sleeves. In this video, we're going to do the makeover of the PLR ebook content from stem to stern. I also mentioned another money making method from this and other PLR content you might just have laying around on your hard drive collecting that old virtual dust. Now I've opened up our product source file in the OpenOffice Writer software. As you can see it somewhat resembles Microsoft Word, yeah, a little bit anyway. And a couple of things we're going to go over here in just a second, but before we jump into the actual editing of our source file, I want to mention that there are other ideas that you can use to generate income from PLR products. This is just simply one of them. Now in addition to the changing of the look, you can also take bits and pieces of several different PLR products, ebooks or articles, and say they're in the same topic, the same niche. You can take those bits and pieces and create a unique product from those. Take a look at the table of contents that are on each one of those particular PLR products and use that as a guide to create your new product. And you can modify each of those as your license will allow you to do. And you can even take it a step further and create an audio ebook from those bits and pieces. You can take additional bits and pieces, modify them even more, and put them into an auto uh, responder for your email clients. You can take uh, even more modifications and use a new PLR ebook that you created from all of those bits and pieces and provide that to a subscriber or to a squeeze page so that you can increase or build a non existent email list. And you've got those emails you built from all those other bits and pieces of that same topic. You can pepper in affiliate links throughout those emails throughout your autoresponders. So not only are you building your subscriber base, you're maintaining the loyalty of your subscribers because you're providing them with quality content on the related item that they initially received to become a member of that email list. And of course, you know, with those affiliate links scattered throughout those emails, who knows, you're probably going to earn some bucks that way as well. But at the very least, you'll always be able to market to those new email subscribers over and over again. That's the main reason behind maintaining or building an email list. So those are just a couple of ideas in so far as dusting off some of the old PLR products you have laying around on your hard drive and putting them to some use for you. Now, one of the things that you want to do in your, in this example anyway, is you want to go through and make sure that the new title that you have is changed throughout the entire ebook. For example, if there's a header or a footer that might have the existing title in there, make those changes. It's also at this point that if you haven't already done so, head on over to your domain name register and get you a domain that is identical to the title, if at all possible, at the very least closely related to that title. So that way, just for added Google juice, you've got a title and a domain name the same. Again, if that domain's already taken, get one that's really close to it. Let me show you what I'm talking about on mine. This is the change that I made. But like, for example, this is the header and the footer I'm referring to is at the bottom of the page. So usually there's a page counter in there. Sometimes the product name is in there as well. Now this is a kind of a, an example, only an example. You may not want all this stuff in there, but I do want to point out though that unless you change the content, I'd say by 50 or 60 percent or more, then you do not want to put your name alone or created by. You only want to put in presented by or brought to you by. Although the license you've got along with this product may allow you to claim authorship, you do not want to unless you changed a majority of the content. And the URL here would be the URL of the product. For example, how to guide for webdesign.com, that would be the URL here, not the URL to your main website. I know that's what it says there, but because the location for that would be right here on the first page or the main page. Let's take a look at some examples here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And in addition to this self promotion, if you will, there are other spots throughout the ebook that you might want to consider doing that too, as well. Not so much affiliate links on every single page, that's overkill. Uh, your customers will not, you know, they will not appreciate that in the least. But let's say the very second page here, a title page 
or an intro page. You might have an extra blurb here or a, an affiliate product advertised here. You might also, at the very end of the ebook, have a resource page that has affiliate links or bonuses that may contain affiliate links. And another idea here on these bonuses, you might, instead of having the links go directly to the download page for that particular bonus product, you might have it go to a squeeze page where the or where the uh, customer has to provide you with their name and email address prior to getting to that downloaded product or to the zip file. Again, just an idea. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. For example, this one here. There's that uh, real estate I was talking about. I think it's kind of gone to waste here, but put your name and uh, main URL or main website address here and a blog address as well. Uh, legal notice, if you do not yet have a folder on your computer titled product creation, do so. Inside of that folder, put uh, another folder, for example, called templates. And inside of that folder, have things like this. You can just kind of retrieve at a moment's notice to put into your newly created products. For example, a legal notice, a, uh, a template for bonus page, or a template for uh, affiliate pages, or a template for resource pages. Hopefully you get the idea. That way you don't have to go through and recreate this each and every time. You just go into your templates folder, pull it out, bing, bang, boom, slap it in there, you're good to go. And what else we got here? Table of contents. Now here is the header and the footer. Pretty minimalistic compared to the one that I have, but you get the idea. Here, and I'll show you how to put that on ours here in just a second. Here's another affiliate product on this particular example. And on ours, you want to again go through the entire book and make sure that all of the links in there, the clickable links, are not pointing to the originators affiliates you want them to be pointing towards yours or eliminate them altogether you want to also go through and make any additional modifications whether it's highlighting this particular word or phrase or bolding it or changing the font or deleting the paragraph altogether uh, replacing it with one of your own again it's at this point you want to go through and make those kinds of modifications you want to do this word for word. You don't want to, you know, just kind of just glance over like I'm doing right now. This is only an example. You want to go through this with a fine tooth comb and make sure that all of the affiliate or all of the clickable links are not going to affiliate pages. You want to make sure that they're going to the actual URL here. Or if they are affiliate products that you might be associated with, send them to your affiliate link. But just a good rule of thumb, I would say no more than maybe. 1%. If you've got 100 pages, 10 affiliate links would be tops throughout the entire ebook. And this is like a resource page I was referring to. This is not a, exactly a resource page, it's more of a bonus. But like I had mentioned earlier, instead of having this link go directly to the download link, have it go to a squeeze page. Collect the email addresses and names of these folks first before they are sent to the zip file. Again, just an idea. You may also want to have a resource page here that is directly related to the topic of the product and in those resources that are clickable links are your affiliate links again just an idea they may not you don't have to have affiliate links there but just added tools for your customers benefit again that's just an example and again these are things you can keep in your uh, template folder let's go ahead and add a, uh, a header because you see here there is no header or footer just like the one that we have in our completed product here header and footer so how do I get those well, let me show you real quick come on up here to insert go to header click on all and that puts this box in there and just type away because whatever you type in here is going to go into all of the boxes throughout the entire ebook whether it is you know 100 pages or 10 pages so we'll put it in the title and a URL if you'd like. I mean that might be all you need. And if we scroll down you'll see that that is in all of the headers throughout the entire ebook. Likewise with the footer. So I'm going to do that same thing. Come on down here to footer, go on all, if we scroll down we'll see that we now have a footer box in there just like we did the other one. And here if we click in here, you see here it's uh, far left you can go too far right, you can go to center, and put in here whatever you'd like. Whether it's the title of the product, you want to put in page numbers, 
let's shoot for that right here go up to insert fields you want to put in the time you want to put in the page number and I'll say of page count 23 pages in this bad boy let's just see here because sometimes this doesn't work all the way through it looks like page four or five yeah she didn't go into page five so what we can do here we'll just go to this one here highlight this function because that's what this is it's not just a number it's a function go and highlight it copy it go down to this next footer where it's not highlight and well come on up here I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut control V as in Victor to paste you see it goes right into the next succession there check this one out 6 of 23 7 of 23 so if you happen to have that issue yep you see here it didn't do that on the header either so let's go ahead on up here and highlight the header function here control C for copy come on down to where it's not and control V as in Victor to paste. And let's see if it put it on all of them. Yep, put it on all of them. So that's how you can adjust the header and footer. You can insert some additional field items, but that's how you can make sure that these items are taken care of. If they were not already there, add them. If they are already there, you want to make sure that they reflect the changes in the title, for example, because a lot of folks are going to use that header and footer as a spot for not just the page number but for the name of the product so make sure you make those changes there now once you've got all those changes made you can create the PDF by coming up here and clicking on this which I wouldn't suggest doing because you cannot secure the PDF by doing it here go over here to file export as PDF leave all of this as default leave all that alone it's just fine the way it is Come on over here to security leave that alone you don't want to mess with that and click on this because you want to restrict the permissions set permission password you might want to remember what this is just for future reference in case you ever decide to get in that yourself and then once you do that click on OK then it ungraze these and you either have them print or not and you can have them make changes or not I suggest or not and I would suggest leaving this one here checked or check it if it is not checked because what this does is this allows the seeing impaired that have additional tools on their computer that reads PDFs back to them kinda adds an auditory tool for them then that's what this does and then once you've got that click on export navigate to where you want this saved now let's just go right here to be fine give it a name as you can see I've already got one named here so we don't want to name it that we'll just leave it as that click on save it makes those changes for us and saves it and let's open this up and here's our title here's the footer I'm sorry that was a header and the footer and one thing I want to point out too right here is telling you that it's secured that nobody can highlight this and right click and copy see there is no copy function whereas with this one here you can see there is no lock over here so you can in fact highlight this right click and copy to clipboard and that's what you do not want to have uh, because it's just totally unsecure but that's a quick rundown on how you can not only use existing PLR content that you have laying around gathering virtual dust on your hard drive but how you can use that to create additional money making products but how you can also make over your existing PLR content ebooks and make a unique product for resale so that's going to bring us to the end of this video on your ebook makeover thank you very much for watching I hope you learned something Take care and have a great day.